Uh, I'm building the London architecture set after that, the new Mando ship. The old London architecture set or the postcard? Which one are you getting or building? Because I love the, the architecture set. The London architecture set is one of my favorites. Partially because I love all the Skyline sets, but partially because of backstory, right? I think I, I mentioned this on TikTok way, way back in the day, back when I had dreams um, <laughs> that I was going to get two London architecture sets. So one I have with the rest of my Skylines in the office in Florida, because I have the whole Skyline series like on a single shelf. And then once I got my dream job, I would get another one and keep it in my office there. But I didn't get my dream job. So I didn't get the Lego set. This is gonna look really weird because I can't do it on the big camera. Um, I've been sitting on this for a few months. <laughs> so, this has got to get built. Um, I don't know when, because I have to fix my desk first, because there's not enough room to build on my desk. I was going to build this on my birthday, but... <laughs> no, I did not get this in London. Um, this was a gift. It is fairly old. So the, the story behind that one, the, the Tower Bridge, is when I started working at Lego, um, it was already like a, a year old at that point. Um, so my goal at Lego was I want to get this set. So when I worked at Lego, we had Lego store bucks for customer service. So like if a customer went to the manager and complimented you, you'd get a couple Lego store dollars. And if somebody filled out a survey positively and put your name on it, you get a couple Lego store dollars. And then you can use those Lego store dollars in addition to your employee discount in order to get Lego sets. My goal for working at Lego was to get this tower bridge set purely based on customer service. So, so I worked really hard. I was really nice to everybody, which as you know, is not difficult to do. Um, and then I saved up all my Lego store dollars and I didn't use them for anything. And then when I finally had enough, I finally had 200 Lego store dollars because plus discount, that would be enough to get the tower bridge. It was discontinued and we, we sold out of it. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> I, I missed out on it completely. So this is my one Lego set that, that got away. Um, what did you get for a farewell gift when you left Lego? I got nothing. <laughs> I asked if I could keep an apron, but I can't. Not allowed to keep the aprons. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't get anything when I left Lego. They do gifts for longevity. So if you work there for five years, if you work there for 10 years, you get a cool little Lego brick pin, which is nice. And then they do their Christmas gifts. So I got my blanket, my cooler, and my camping chair. So, so each Christmas they give you two Christmas gifts. One is a Lego set that's exclusive to employees, and one is um, a non-Lego thing that's Lego branded. So for my non-Lego thing, I got I got a cooler one year, I got a camping chair one year, and I got a blanket one year, which is really nice. Really brings the home together. Lego partnered with some energy company in Germany to help turn offshore oil rigs into wind turbines. So one year the, get, the gift was that. It was a Lego model of an oil rig with a built-in wind turbine that was branded. Thank you for the chijation check. Someone's not moving out of the way of the fire truck. One year I got birds, just a set of like, I think it was an eagle, a canary, and not a canary. What's the red one? Cardinal and one other bird, I think a blue jay. And then what was the other one? Oh, the other one was a Christmas diorama, so like elves and presents diorama. In addition to just being an awesome work environment, Lego has a lot of perks. Like you get free Lego all the time. I don't know if they do this anymore, but whenever there was a gift of, with purchase, unless it was like a limited edition thing like the Star Wars ones, they'd put it in your locker at work and then you just get one. And then obviously if you buy stuff and you qualify for a gift with purchase before the discount, then you can get another one. I still have my vest from Walmart. They changed the vests. See, I I want, <laughs> I wanted that apron so bad. It's such a nice apron. It's so useful. On my merch store for the Persian 
Lego logos that I made, you can get yellow aprons that have the logo in the same place. So they're not embroidered like the like the ones at the store, but you can get Lego store adjacent aprons. I need to get myself one of those too. So if you're an apron person and you want a, something that looks like a Lego apron, go for it. Um, that makes me feel better. I got a t-shirt and a mask with my face on it after four years. Hey, at least it had a, your face on it. <laughs> it could be just a generic mask, right? Or a company mask. Like even, I don't have the cooler or the chair here, but, but the blanket came in a cool box that has the Lego logo printed on it. And the blanket itself has the Lego logo printed on it. So, you know, only, only employees get this, which makes it feel kind of cool. Whereas I know some employee gifts are like things you can get anywhere. They were giving the VIP Lego blanket. It's a fleece blanket that has Lego stuff printed on it. This is a Sherpa blanket that has the Lego logo embroidered on it. So it's a little bit different. And also I didn't have to spend $250 to get this one. I just had to spend, you know, eight hours a day, three days a week. <laughs> also, one thing that I do regret from Lego is I signed up for the VIP program as soon as it started, but now when you sign up for Lego VIP, you get perks. The cards are blue now, they used to be red, and you get a little keychain for signing up for LEGO VIP. So it's like, very cool. I never got any of that for signing up for VIP. <laughs> I've been tempted every time I go to the LEGO store to just sign up for a new card, but I've never actually pulled the trigger. I get too nervous. Cause I'm not gonna be like, hey, can I sign up for VIP? Cause, well one, if I do that, I won't get the points on my card. It'll go onto the new card. And I'm not gonna be like, hey, can I sign up for VIP? And then five seconds later, hey, I already have a VIP card. Can you merge the two accounts? <laughs> One day when, I, when I'm just buying a keychain or something, I will sign up for VIP and I will get the free thing and it will be good. I would either ask the store or email customer service see if they'll give you those things. I have asked the store and they said, no, you have to sign up for it because they do track them. How many points do I have left? Like 1,500. <laughs> I don't use my points. I barely use my points. Especially after they changed the system. And Chunks, I know you asked about this on TikTok like a year ago, and I still haven't responded to your comment. Um, because I don't know exactly how the VIP system works. When VIP started, you can redeem $5 for every $100 that you spend, which is pretty straightforward. But now they have like, you can redeem it for a discount, or you can like get tickets to Legoland or get a lunchbox or a hat or something. At some point they messed up on yours, you have two keychains. So the question is, Podius, do you have um, the red keychain or the blue keychain? Because they did red keychains for a while. And I think my brother has one of those. Um, but now they do the blue keychains. And I really like the blue ones. Uh, I'm glad they merged the in-store and online discounts because that was odd. I thought it was, it was always merged. You could select if you wanted to use your VIP discount online. Um, assuming it was the same thing, like when you sign up for the VIP card in the store, then you have to go online and connect it to your online account so that it's there. Now you have to go to your VIP rewards, select that you want to use a discount, and then it gives you a discount code, and then you put in the discount code when you check out, and then that's how it works. So it's a little bit more complicated nowadays. But before you can just select, I'm using VIP points. So when I got my first VIP card, I put it on the, the lego.com account that I had since middle school that I used to play video games. Okay, how many VIP points do I have? Same password I used in middle school. <laughs> Don't hack into my account, please. Hey VIP, that's you, 6,443. What did I say before, 1,500? Yeah, it's not 1,500, it's 6,000. Six and a half thousand. Uh, I can't find how much Legoland tickets are, but you can get really neat wrapping paper right now. Ooh, I forget, do you have a, a discovery center around you? I know you're not near one of the parks. So the cool thing about um, Legoland tickets, if you want to make the three hour drive to get your wrapping paper at Chunks, is if you go to the gate, buy a ticket, go inside, come out, and go back to guest services outside the gate, within an hour, you can get the price of your ticket refunded. Yeah. So if you want to drive 
I guess three hours there, three hours back, six hours to get some wrapping paper. And that's it. Uh, you can just do that and not have to pay for admission. In my experience, that one hour, because when I lived in Florida, Legoland was only an hour and a half away, so it was a little bit more worth it. Oh, wait, no, that's a Discovery Center. I don't know if the, check, check, check the Discovery Center website. It's called a shopping pass. Make sure that the Discovery Center has that before you go. Because at Legoland Resort, they have that. You can hit every store in Legoland Resort and go on one ride and get lunch. So it's, it's worth it. And you can save 80 bucks. Um, the wrapping paper is a VIP reward though. I can't find out how much Legoland tickets, but you can get a really neat wrapping paper right now. Oh, you're looking at the rewards. I thought the wrapping paper was at Legoland. <laughs> That's my bad. Yes, okay, the Legoland tickets are a reward and the wrapping paper is a reward. I confused myself. That's fine, that happens. The Legoland tickets, they might not have them right now, but the Legoland tickets that are re that are rewards are usually buy an adult admission, get a free child admission, which if you're at the Lego store or at, I was gonna say Toys R Us, but they don't have that in the States, but the poly bag sets, the really small sets, usually have the exact same thing on the back for free. It comes with a buy one, get one free Legoland admission. You know, that's worth checking out if you plan on going to Legoland. And those tickets also work at the Discovery Center. Yes, oh, you already have one, perfect. Um, there are still Toys R Us in Canada. Toys R Us Canada and Toys R Us USA are different companies. So when Toys R Us USA said, we're gonna switch to online only, and then fell apart, <laughs> that didn't happen to, to, to Toys R Us Canada. I think Target poly bags have them. Yes, the Target exclusive poly bags also have them. I forgot that Target had exclusive poly bags because we don't have Target here. Also the used Lego store. Yeah, I guess the used Lego store would have them as well. It's on just, they're usually city, sometimes like Ninjago and stuff like that, but they usually have the, the coupons on the back. Having more than one doesn't help <laughs> unless you're going for multiple days because it's only day admission. Just the one that you have from your dad should work. However, I can't speak for all Toys R Us's, but the one near my place doesn't have a lot of kids in it. It's not a place where a kid can be a kid anymore. It's mostly grown-ups, and a lot of them are shopping for themselves. Yeah, Denver doesn't have a Discovery Center. That's why I was wondering if you were gonna go to there, because they don't have a Discovery Center. But there's lots of Discovery Centers around the country, and there's a Legoland in California, a Legoland in Florida, and one in New York, if you want the full experience. Maybe if you go to Disneyland California, also go to Legoland. That's a good plan as well. I don't think they're next to each other. I think they're pretty far apart. But that's what I did two times ago when I went to Disneyland is we did Disneyland for a couple days because it's only two parks. You can get it in a day, two days. You can get it in two days. And then we also went to Legoland and Hollywood and all those other places as well. And then there's a Universal Studios coming to uh, Frisco, Fresno, Frisco, Texas, somewhere. Whichever of those F names is in Texas. Yeah, so if you decide to go to Disneyland, once uh, San Francisco opens, obviously, then you can go to Disneyland as well. Or not Disneyland, uh, Legoland. Uh, they haven't announced a date for San Francisco yet, um, but they have started the work. Typical Disney. Oh, it's coming in late 2023, opens in 2025. I forgot we are supposed to go to New York to visit a friend and see Legoland with her there. Perfect, it all worked out. And you can use the coupon there too if you want. That's the newest Legoland resort, I think in the world. So it should be pretty up to date. They just revamped Miniland in Orlando. So it's covered now. So you can go in the rain. Um, but also I've been to Legoland in Billund, which is the first Legoland. And you can tell it's the first Legoland because it seems 50 years old. It's 55 now, but, or 56. Yeah, 56 years old now. Went to Disneyland and got strep throat and had a fever dream where the Cars animatronics ate me alive. That's terrifying, Somberton. I am sorry that happened to you. If it's any consolation, the first time I went to Disney World and rode Hollywood Tower Hotel, uh, I had nightmares about elevators and could not ride in an elevator for months. And I didn't get strep throat. It was just a regular nightmare. The only thing I have to say about Legoland Hotel is make sure you get a themed room. I know the unthemed rooms are cheaper, but they suck. 
<laughs> the unthemed rooms are comfy. But they're not even like... You know how there's like grown-up Lego where it's like subtle Lego decorations and businessy and stuff? They don't even have that. Make sure you get like a pirate room or a castle room or something. I went to the one in Billund and for those of you who don't know the history of Billund, Billund was built by Lego, pretty much. It was a city where Lego was founded, but Lego is responsible for all like the expansion of the city, the amenities, the power, the airport, like the city is built around Lego. So they have non-Lego rooms as well. And that's where I stayed when I went. It's very not fun. So hopefully all the rooms in New York are themed and you can enjoy the experience. I do need to go back to Billund though at some point. I'll ask my parents because they're nearby. They're like, hey, can you go to Denmark real quick and get me two Lego, three, Le three Lego sets? Thank you. <laughs> you only need to go to the airport. They're available at the airport. I also had to miss the day everyone went to Universal, which means I missed my one chance to enjoy the Harry Potter land guilt-free. Uh, here's a fun fact, Somerton. You can still enjoy the Harry Potter land guilt-free. Some people aren't comfy with that, but you can enjoy the land guilt-free because going to the land doesn't put money in anyone's pocket. <laughs> buying branded food and buying the merchandise, that is what puts money in the monster pocket, in the monster book of monster pockets. If you find yourself at Universal, you can walk through the land, you can go on the rides, you can eat the cauldron cakes, just don't get the bottled water from inside the, that section. Don't get any branded food. So you can get the fish and chips, you can get the shepherd's pie, you can get all the fun British food you want there. You can get the Wellingtons. <laughs> but as long as you stay away from the butterbeer, you're all good. The butterbeer and the water, because the water is branded. And you can get as many cauldron cakes as you want because they are the best snack in all of Universal, aside from the Cat in the Hat cookies, which I don't think are in California, but butterbeer, but butterbeer. If you go to Universal in Orlando, if you leave Universal via Hollywood Boulevard, you go down Turkey Lake Road. When Turkey Lake meets Sand Lake, there's a Publix and you get your Flying Cauldron brand butterscotch beer because it's better than what you get in the parks and it doesn't support the monster. It is a better butterbeer. <laughs> is the butterbeer there actually good? I've heard conflicting things. I don't remember uh, if it was about different recipes. Out of all the butterbeers that I've tried, the Flying Cauldron brand butterscotch beer is the best. It's not too sweet. It just tastes like a, a butterscotch flavored cream soda. It's fine. The one at Universal is so sweet that it will make you sick. I cannot drink the butterbeer at Universal Studios because it makes me sick every single time. At Universal, when I got butterbeers, I would have to get the frozen one because the frozen one, you drink slowly enough that it doesn't make you feel sick. Universal butterbeer is too sick. That being said, there's one other butterbeer that you can get, two other butterbeers that you can get. If you want an authentic experience instead of the store-bought stuff, the butterbeer from Platform 9 and 3 quarters is very, very good. However, it's not a cream soda. It's a little bit sweet. It's got a lot of tartness to it, like an actual beer. It's not actually alcoholic, but it's got a lot of ginger aftertaste. So if you like a little bit of sweetness and you want your mouth to burn after, get the one for Platform 9 and 3 quarters. And then the other place where you can get butter beer is Warner Brothers Studios. Warner Brothers Studios has something that is in between Universal and Platform 9 and 3 quarters. Not as sweet as Universal, but it's not as tangy as Platform 9 and 3 quarters. It's a good middle ground butterbeer. They rebranded butterbeer in London. They changed the logo and the branding and stuff. I don't know if that change has made it over to the States yet. So there's my butterbeer breakdown, yay! Just so people know, you can get the Flying Cauldron brand online. Not sure how much plus shipping it's like that, but I don't think I have anything that sells it near me. If you're in Florida, Publix has it, usually. So like if you're visiting Universal Studios Florida, get the butterbeer from Publix instead. There's a candy store near me here that has American candies and American sodas and stuff. They have it here as well. You can get it online plus shipping. If you go to Salem, Massachusetts, a lot of the mom and pop shops down there have it as well. So it's definitely worth checking out if you can get the Flying Cauldron one. Okay, random rabbit hole. Apparently the Disney blind bags this year, they get, they have Baymax. I'm gonna have to spend so much money to get it for Nicola. You probably know that I strongly, strongly dislike blind bags. Not a fan of blind bags. The one caveat is after a blind bag is discontinued, you can find opened ones online for just like usually a dollar or two more. So that's what I did with like 
Lego mystery minifigures is if there was one in a series and I knew I wasn't gonna get it, I would just wait till it's discontinued and then get it online. And same thing with when I collected wands, the Noble Collection had mystery bag wands that were a different quality than their replicas. So I wanted to get one of those in Ginny's style to match the rest of them. And that's the same deal, just wait for it to be discontinued and then buy it uh, online. Do, 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 do. Is it a full circle? Because I was talking about that and then you went on a tangent and then I brought your tangent back to the subject. I don't think that counts. I have the Mega Bloks Halo series blind bags because the ultra rare is usually a brick build rather than a figure and there's nothing in the bag to obstruct the feeling so I can feel if it's bricks or limbs. Have you had success with that, Alfred? Have you gotten the ultra rares or are you still looking? Yeah, it worked once at a Target. Uh, my fiance's mom gave me a weird look and then when she saw me filling up all the bags. This is why I don't go shopping, toy shopping with my parents because they always give me weird looks. But to be fair, like I've said countless times, my brothers are bigger like toy fans, Star Wars fans, Lego fans than I am. They usually get weirder looks. And then we just deal with the, um, the size and the head shaking when we get home bought another lightsaber. Really, do you need another lightsaber? Lego has moved to boxes. A lot of the like grown-up Lego fans are really, really mad about that. And I don't really understand why. My facts don't care about their feelings. <laughs> yeah, most or other boxes are a piece of cardboard in the bag. For some reason, Mega Bloks hasn't done that either. It's a very opaque, thick plastic. I don't think calling it Mega Bloks counts as dead naming. They still use Mega Bloks as a name. They've, they've split up into, so the company is Mega, but they still have Mega Bloks branded toys and Mega Constructs branded toys. And when it comes to Halo, I don't know if that's Blocks or Constructs. I know it used to be Blocks, but it might be Constructs now. The things that I heard are compatible with other leading brands or under the Constructs name. Oh, that might be it then because mega one of mega's like specialties is having very very specific pieces which aren't always compatible with other brands so maybe that's the designation i'm gonna take your word for it until i hear otherwise